Ineos try to work over Roglic, stop, start, attacks, and a record broken. This is Paris Stage 7, the only mountaintop finish this year, up Col de Torini. A pretty fresh day. It's a 15k, 7% climb. Not the hardest stage beforehand, with Primoz Roglic in the leader's jersey by a pretty handy 40 seconds ahead of Simon Yates. But... No Koos, no Vingegaard here. He's a bit thin on Mountain Domestiques. A breakaway went but was kept in short order by Ineos who wanted both the stage and to put Roglic under pressure today. But they're also light on Mountain Domestiques. Merku saying a rope con Los Cones as he's caught from the breakaway. And yeah, Ineos basically have Dylan Van Baal pacing before the climb proper even starts. Amador was already done at this point. They just had Freyler when the 15k climb starts, break at 55 seconds, so they had no chance when you look at the overhead. So Yates and Martinez couldn't put someone, even like Bruno Armirail, who we saw in Provence the other week, to set. He did an incredible job for FTJ. They didn't have that. Ikea actually had more numbers for Quintana, pulls there for Haig. But yeah, it was Ikea trying to set a steady pace for Nairo. He's a minute 40 back. He needs to gain some time back on GC, even to get on the podium. Wout self-dropped again, it seems, preserving his legs for the classic. So it was just Kreuzweig for a small amount of time. But once again, mainly Rowan Dennis as the support for Primoz Roglic on this climb. Dennis has been the best domestique for Roglic this week. Mulberg of the Austrian for Movistar, First time we've seen him showing out. He was the last of the breakaway, whilst Naira really couldn't get any separate or his domestiques to create any separation. It's a tall order. You look how fast they're going. Even it says nine percent. Still, the draft is still really important. And Dennis did a really good job shutting this stage down once again from nine to seven and a half k's to go. And yeah, Ineos had to attack off Dennis' pace. Latour has dropped early. And Yates attacks off that pace. He moved up to behind Dennis. It's not like he had a domestique go to the front to really turn it up for two minutes to thin out the group. And interestingly, Roglic, and probably a good thing, doesn't react. He's like, let Dennis finish the maximum he can. No need to overreact to Yates' move. That's probably what Ineos want Roglic to do. They're trying to one-two him. Dennis finishes and eventually Roglic bridges across. Yates is a minute 11 behind on GC. Martinez at 50. Quintana counters. And Simon Yates, I think, was the second strongest on this climb today. But he plays himself here. He doesn't react to the Yates or Quintana Roglic Martinez move and is sitting on whilst Vlasov is pacing. They go up the road and he has to start his first of two long bridges on his own today whilst Roglic pretty comfortably closes down the Adam Yates move, who'd eventually actually get dropped afterwards. But this is a good tactic from Ineos. They're trying to 1-2 Roglic in theory, and Martinez gets to sit on Roglic wheel across, but, and predictably, he's going to then counter-attack Roglic here. But the pace hadn't been hard enough from the base. It's not steep enough. Roglic is looking fresh, good weather, a bit cold, but no rain or anything like that. He marks Martinez easily, and it stalls. And McNulty and Almeida were looking good. Vlasov was pacing back with Haig on his wheel. Izagir and Martin actually rode a pretty good climb today. Mulberger, last man of the break, eventually caught by Roglic counterattacking. Which thing, why, why counterattack? He's in the leader's jersey. He's got a 40-second buffer. Well... If he didn't attack there, he was going to kept getting countered by Adam Yates. Yates was going to come back and probably counter again. Quintana would have attacked. Simon Yates would have attacked. And now he's just got a battle with one guy. He's got one Ineos rider with him, Danny Martinez, and he even gets him to work with him. Whilst Quintana's fighting solo, Adam Yates is fighting solo, Simon Yates eventually has to pull himself with Quintana on his wheel. And you think, oh, why should Martinez pull? Why is he pulling with Roglic? Well... Adam Yates had been on the radio saying, I presume that he'd been dropped. So it's not like he could play the card of Adam Yates coming back from behind. He's 50 seconds behind Roglic. He's behind Simon Yates on GC. So at least Danny Martinez is moving up. And definitely, he probably wants to stake a claim as Ineos Tour de France GC leader. I'll have a video on what Ineos should do later next week when there's less racing on. But yeah, Martinez was looking strong, working with Roglic. Perfect situation for Roglic. Good legs. Got a guy willing to work with him. He's no longer being attacked. Pools does a really good job pacing for Haig behind. As you can see, McNulty and Almeida at the back as well with Maori. Vlasov would actually get dropped and lose over a minute on this climb. His plus 20-minute climbing performances continue to be an issue. Haig, I think, lost 27 seconds today. But Yates, 
as I said, he, he wasn't happy with Quintana. Quintana didn't help him, which I agree with. Quintana's way back on GC and probably wanted to go for the stage at this point and was also on the limit. And Yates just missed two moves but was really strong today. He just had to do a lot of work on defense. They eventually start track standing and attacking each other for the entirety of the last two and a half kilometers. Roglic, I swear, attacked almost out of boredom. They stalled so much that they had a huge gap on the group behind with Hagen Co. But this stalling meant that this group got really close and came back. It was at 20 seconds at this point with Almeida, who almost making contact with them with 500 meters to go. Yates attacked another two times. And each time now, Quintana was being distanced and would go to the front of this group straight away and keep pacing. Perhaps he'd heard on the radio the other guys are coming back. Whether that's for points, whether that's just because he wants to go fourth or fifth on GC, either way, that's good for Arkea if he does move up because they're desperate in the points battle. But this was all playing into the hands of Roglic, who has been isolated a lot in theory during this Paris-Nice. But the group dynamics has worked into his favor with, again, Almeida coming back, as you can see here, and Nairo pacing the group. He knows he can't take the stage. The group dynamics basically bringing Roglic to 200 meters to go. He's in the drops. You know what's next. We've seen this for years. Tour de la 2020, you name it, stage over. No one's beating him in that 200 meter sprint. Martinez does his best and gaps Simon Yates, but Roglic takes the Pyrenees Queen stage in back to back years. He broke the record, even with the track standing. You can see this on lanternrouge.com.au. Roglic, 6.05 watts per kilo for 39 minutes 58, 40 seconds or so quicker than Egan Bernal and Naira Quintana back in 2019 Paris Nice. As you can see on this graph, that stacks up very well with Primoz Roglic peak performances in 2021. And if you look at how does this compare to the rest of the climbing performances in 2022 on the website, you can see it in the article linked down below, it's a really good level of performance on a longer climb. And if you're thinking, oh, maybe Naira was a bit off today, it kind of looks like he was at a similar level to his victory on Montagne de Lua the other day. Maybe he had a little bit more punch there on an easier stage and race beforehand, but still Naira at a good level, just higher level guys, Simon Yates, Martinez, and Roglic here. But here's the revised GC, some big moves with Latour dropping down to eighth. Roglic a comfy lead of 47 seconds on Yates and one minute on Martinez. That being said, we were in the same position last year in Paranese before the last stage. We know what happened this year. It could be an even trickier stage, longer climbs. Bahrain and Ineos probably won't want to go down without a fight. Could be rainy, tricky day for Jumbo Visma, and it's always a must-watch stage, stage out of Paranese. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you with a recap of that tomorrow. Ciao.